Last time in Zombie Corn by John Green. You know who else used to be people? She asked me after a while. We did, and they took that away from us. And now, Chapter 12. Which observation has rather stuck with me. Here in this meager root cellar lies all that remains of Mia Featherstone, who was sixteen years old when circumstances separated her body from her soul. I ended up reading Descartes. I stole him out of the Herald Washington Library, and when I got to the cellar, I read him out loud to Mr. President, because unless I read out loud, I couldn't understand a word he was saying, and there was no one left to read to except Mr. President. I'm not much for philosophy, but that old Descartes, he really got me thinking. And therefore being. Anyone? Anyone? Cogito ergo some jokes? No? Oh, okay. Anyways, here's the question. Essentially, what is the difference between the Z'd up and me? So far as I can tell, the Z's are in the business of walking around and doing whatever they have to do to continue walking around. In this respect, they're like almost all people who ever lived. In other words, you will meet the occasional René Descartes who sits down and spends a lot of time thinking about the nature and meaning of his existence although the solutions such people settle upon are inevitably inadequate, almost as if all meaning is constructed, grafted onto life and not inherent to it. But, I mean, yeah, occasionally you will encounter such people. But the vast majority of people are like Caroline. Why do you shoot Zs? Because I hate them. Why do you hate them? Because they ruined everything, and if everyone had been as aggressive as me, there would still be a humanity. Why is humanity better than Z's? And it was there that she always paused, because the only honest answer is because I'm human. Because humanity is us, and Xenity is them. Sure, you can answer that they're a dead end evolutionarily, and that their existence spells the end of our species. But let me submit to you, as someone standing on the very edge of the apocalyptic cliff our species has so long awaited, the prospect of a world that contains neither humans nor Zs is not so terrifying. Nature will take its world back. Animals will frolic and fight. There will be no lord of the manor, which is not such a bad thing. Because it seems to me that people have done a pretty poor job of guiding the biosphere for the last few thousand years. The Zs will kill us all, and then the Zs will die out, and in sixty years there will be no one to remember our silly war. Caroline's wasted ammunition, my year of zombic survivalism, René Descartes' musing, or Michelangelo's sculptures. And that is really the only sadness here as I drink a thousand dollar bottle of wine down in the cellar. We did a few things worth remembering, and I wish for someone to remember them. All right, so hello everybody. As you could probably hear, I did something a little different at the beginning of this chapter uh, because the beginning of chapter 12 was a continuation of a thought. Um, so yeah, I had to do that. I'd just like to point out the Descartes joke is uh, not me breaking character. That is a footnote in the actual story. Right, okay, so if the zombies are a dead end evolutionarily, which is a take I had to take about ten times. Um, then, in theory, couldn't a whole bunch of people get together and go to an island where there's no corn and make sure they don't eat corn and then just like keep the zombies away for like a few generations and then, you know, humanity can start taking over again? Anyways, I haven't finished the book. I don't know if that's how this goes. Uh, this is just my musings as I read it along with you guys. So, I hope you have a wonderful day, my friends. Thank you for listening. Bye!